As a result, their food has become familiar to us all. A dim sum, stir fry, char siu. The connection between the two nations goes back to 1841, when Hong Kong became a British colony. In 1997, the British handed it back to China, but there is far more recent history than that. The Hong Kong government introduced a new security law in 2020, and that led to an erosion in democracy, demonstrations and arrests. And then at that point, some Hong Kong activists came to the UK as asylum seekers, and the UK government took the decision to give people with the British, with British national or BNO passports the right to come to the UK and to settle permanently. Food has come up very regularly in the work that we've been doing with Hong Kongers. So many felt they had to leave Hong Kong, both themselves, but especially for their children. They want them to grow up in a democratic society. But leaving your country doesn't mean that you leave your culture behind. And Hong Kongers have a strong identity as Hong Kongers, and food is one expression of that. Another way in which food comes up is in setting up small businesses. We have had the setting up businesses or closing down a restaurant in Hong Kong with the open in the UK, but more often it's not that. It's people who have professional roles in Hong Kong, teachers, nurses, IT, finance, and they've just decided they want to do something else. It's a very high-pressured life in, in Hong Kong, and a lot of people coming from Hong Kong just want to start their lives again. Heather Roll, Think Tank British Future. And we'll come back to her shortly. As a restaurant critic by trade, I have definitely noticed a gradual but significant change in food culture since this recent wave of Hong Kong migration. Whispers of new restaurant openings, favourite spots that have been picked up and relocated almost brick by brick to the leafy suburbs of London, Reading or outskirts of Manchester. And these migrants have brought with them a more modern take. It's demonstrated by Holy Shoe, who also come to them. I also want to hear from Hong Kongers themselves about why they have left their home country and how food is helping them integrate and even, for some, providing a route to resistance. But first, it was time to taste. Wow, so our food is arriving. Oh my god. So basically, the only one in here got the, uh, the broth itself is made by the pork bone and chicken bone. And then uh, we boil it for around six hours to make the base and then after that we also put the chili oil we make. The chili oil uh, itself contain like uh, I think around 12 of the spices and then we blend it and mix it all together and uh, with the dry chili, like three different kind of dry chili and then we just fry all of them together and create this chili oil. When it comes to That's Chung who says I'm holy sheep with a school friend and business partner when they came to the UK in 2021. We grill it, and then we place all of them together. That's how the noodle appears. Mm, right, I'm, I'm ready to dive in. Good. Everyone's standing back to see how I react, but yeah, that is... <coughs> that is beautiful. Really gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's quite intense for me, but such complexity i can really really taste the numbing spice there as well to give me a chance to recover and enjoy the delicious and really quite spicy rice noodles i asked chum Wai to tell me the story behind his restaurant and his own views on hong kong food culture my name is chum Wai, and uh this is my friend and my name is Yahin, and we are the director of Holy Ship, and we opened Holy Ship in 2023, last year. Two, three years ago, when we landed here, we didn't find any like a proper Hong Kong or like an Asian rice noodle in here. I mean, we see chance, and then we just, we just cook it. At the same time, I know how diverse UK is, so we don't want to just bring like a exact like a Hong Kong rice noodle in here. We want to make something else. So that's why we kind of mix with Japanese, uh, like a ramen way, and how they grill their meat and how they prepare their broth. I think we are proud of what we do because we actually did lots of tests on the broth and the chili oil, and they're original. Is it important to you to bring some authentic? 
Hong Kong culture through food. We just want to eat like a proper good rice noodle, just like when we're in Hong Kong. And when it comes to the authentic, it's actually very hard when it comes to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a place that, like, you know what's a colony of UK. You know Hong Kong restaurant, like a Pa Chan Tang, it's like mixed with Western food, with Hong Kong like a Chinese food together. You want to ask for the authentic, but this, no, it just makes everything is made from Western and Asia. We take the great thing in both ways and combine it together. That's how Hong Kong is. And we are fast to adapt and quick. And that's how we are. So what you say that Hong Kong cuisine is almost naturally inauthentic. Is many things at once. All right. Yeah, that will be my idea of Hong Kong, and just like Hong Kong people as well. But the Asian culture and the traditions, and at the same time, we also have the Western way of thinking as well. How has it been for you to start a restaurant here? You know, we're fresh off the boat, and uh, nobody knows us, and we're nobody, and we don't have also enormous of money. So we have to start from very tiny thing. We actually start from on the street with a tent. And uh, even that one, very tight, lots of difficulty and corruption. So uh, we really fight hard to achieve to be right now. But of course, we're not stopping. We're going to further to open a restaurant in a permanent. Like not in the market, but actual permanent. Seems like lots of immigrants from Hong Kong are here. And there's uh, like a big opportunity with the uh, Hong Kong food and things that Hong Kong used to. And I can see a lot more are uh, coming. Not only in London, but also in Manchester. You can see them growing a lot. The, the thing is, which I love about food like this, you have a taste and people can hear the spluttering and I'm sweating away here. But then you just can't stop going back because it's so delicious and you're just like, I just haven't stopped. I haven't been able to stop myself eating, so. You know, maybe I'll be back in a few months and I'll, uh, I'll be on the hard stuff. Definitely, definitely. As a young restaurant owner who turns 30 this year, Chun Wai also had an interesting take on who should cook his beloved noodle broth for reasons of consistency and cost. We actually didn't go with the traditional approach. We used a more than like an industrial way. We create a recipe ourselves and then we measure everything based on the gram so whoever on that makes the same taste do you think that's a bit of a generational thing that you know previous generations of hong kong heritage business owners might have been reliant on a family member or a chef that knew the cuisine when it comes to chef chef is one of the biggest expense of restaurant in chinese restaurant especially um, we want to change that uh, of course, like we're not trying to change anyone else, but but ourselves. One of the problem with Chinese restaurants in back in the old time, not nowadays. Okay, they hire a chef. You know, it have a certain taste. But after the chef left, it become another taste. So we don't want this to happen to us. We want our customer like familiar with our taste, like like our taste, and then just stick to it. For example, if a high professional chef, it might be costing like maybe 40, 50 grand a year. But if I don't need to hire a like, professional one, I can maybe drop at least like half of the salary away. And this is actually help a lot. And of course, in the future, if I have like a robotic, I would definitely choose with a machine. <laughs> where do the recipes come from then, Chimai? Like, where did you learn to, to be able to cook like this? I actually don't know how to cook. <laughs> I just used the scientific way to find out what it tastes better. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying until you get a good one. <laughs> like really, we just we just found a random recipe and then we we just do lots of research and then see oh maybe this will go good with this and then we let's find out and then we make it and then if it tastes good then mm, okay then we'll keep this. If it's not good we'll just leave it and then you know you keep doing this and then. You have a perfect recipe. For some Hong Kongers, the taste of home they crave has an added significance. Not only do they want to eat Hong Kong food, they want Hong Kong food made by Hong Kong people. But, as we found out, that can be a difficult thing for them to express. The new security law in Hong Kong by the Chinese government prohibits criticism of the state. Many of those I spoke to still travel back or have family. They spoke carefully sounded a bit weird, but nevertheless, the 
and started to come out in almost every conversation we had. Here's Joyce, putting into words how she feels. I came uh, in 2022, um, like many Hong Kongers, uh, we also looking for um, more freedom here in the UK. Because I'm bringing uh, my mom for myself, I open to uh, more different kind of places. My, my personal experience is when I first arrived here, because London is very uh, culturally diversified city, so I found that oh, there's lots of food that is not very common in Hong Kong. Uh, what kind of things? Like some African cuisine and also Turkish. Uh, there's some shops, but um, not many. But it is very easy to find here in London. So yeah, that is something I'm very open to try. But uh, for my mom, especially uh, on the first few weeks uh, when she arrives, um, I found that she actually was looking for some familiar taste to help her to feel at home. I think this is the power of the flavor mm. of taste. I can feel the power of the made in Hong Kong ingredients is a bit difficult to in most Asian grocery stores. But there's one in Stratford that is run by Hong Kongers and they are selling quite a lot of made in Hong Kong seasonings and sauce. So I sometimes I would go to Stratford to get an ingredient. So you're having to make this pilgrimage really because it means that much to for the ingredients and the food that you're using to be made in Hong Kong. Why can't you just buy something that you find in an Asian supermarket that may be produced in China that you go and support as Hong Kong owned businesses and Hong Kong made products? For myself, I don't really want to buy everything from China. I just don't feel like I want to uh, buy, buy from there. <laughs> I want to help our Hong Kong, the Hong Kong economy instead. So that's the reason why if I can choose, if I have the option, that I will, I will just, no matter how far I need to travel, I still want to get something from Hong Kong. Yeah. Through your work with the Welcoming Committee, did you find that there were other people that felt the way you felt? I, I think that uh, some Hong Kong has got a similar feeling, uh, because I see uh, some discussion um, from some Facebook or social media groups on where you can buy something uh, not made in China. From spicy rice noodle to another Hong visit, it was time to hear from a restaurant owner who has moved his hot pot business to the UK and now delivers to Hong Kongers up and down the country. My name is Sam Wong, originally from Hong Kong, and I've been living in England for the past two years. I'm currently operating a food delivery service specializing in Hong Kong style chicken hot pot. I deliver the, my food every weekend to different places in England. Can you just briefly tell me why you decided to leave Hong Kong? The main reason I leave Hong Kong is for my kids because I want them to have a better life. You know, these things happen in Hong Kong after 2019. I think not just me, as the Hong Kong people, we talk about the recent designs for the next generation. I'm speaking about you. Why did you care? I think UK is the most popular because the BNO visa allowed leaving Hong Kong more easy. Another reason is Hong is one of the colony before 1997. So that's why our culture is similar to England. I think this is easier for us to adapt life in England rather than in other places. Sometimes when we travel to London, we can find the same feeling, just like we, we stick in Hong Kong. <laughs> so that's why we, we have something like the connection between the England and Hong Kong. How anything about hot pot is very much uh, communal activity. Can you can you explain a little bit about hot pot for those who don't why it's so prized and so beloved particularly in Hong Kong food culture? I mean, hot pot actually is referred uh, to the sweet fondue is a uh, party food. Take the thumbnails, vegetables, anything that you like, you can cook inside the hot pot, uh, inside the pot you will see a lot of amazing on the table and people just sitting together, eating together and playing together, something like this. 
what are some of the regions that you, that you send a lot of to, and how do they reflect where Hong Kong is that settled all across the UK? Mainly, the region they live in is like uh, Manchester, Reading, Birmingham, and the Surrey area. And so I have a regular travel to there like every month. And the longest region we really spent in 10 hours drive to Scotland, I met, met it in a round trip in one day. What is the reaction like then? You must see what it means to people. When they see me, they are very happy because they knew my restaurant in Hong Kong and some of them, they have eat my food in Hong Kong in my restaurant so they missed the taste when they came to England I think my food, my chicken hot pot is something like the comfort food the home food for, for them Sam told me about his old restaurant in Hong Kong 66 hot pot which became famous for standing in solidarity with the pro-democracy protests in 2019. And he explained how food in Hong Kong became a central part of the social movement. Actually, in the peak time in Hong Kong, I had a uh, full shot at the same time and over 100 staff. I understand also that your shops became quite an important place in the context of the pro-democracy movement can you talk to me a little bit about that? At that time, the things happened on 2019. And at that moment, my shop and even me is like standing together with the Hong Kong people or protesters. I cannot talk too much to sensitive, you know, you know the, the security measures in Hong Kong. But we, we stand together at the same time. So the people at that moment, they avoid to use the, like, the Made in China products. If you are the shop at the same standing side, they willing to pay for the food, you for the product. They uh, want you employ the uh, the staff, even with the same point of view, same political views. So the money only flowing with circle. We we call this yellow economy circle. But you know the culture and the lifestyle in Hong Kong, we almost dying out every day from breakfast lunch to dinner so that you you will see the reason why the first layer of this economy circle is restaurant is food shop becoming the part of the movement are you finding among your customers that uh, your solidarity the protest movement is part of why people want to support your business i think this is one of the reasons but also they knew me from the beginning of the 2019 from the product. So I think I think one of the reasons maybe the, the people still want to support the restaurant coming from Hong Kong and the second reason is the quality of the food. I think it is more important, yes. <laughs> I think you can say that, yeah, I think your uh, your reputation speaks for itself, Sam. I'm, I'm sad that I can't try something on it. Was it really challenging to find things that, that have their roots in Hong Kong and business and to keep that circle? In UK, this is more easier because you, you can avoid the many China product. You, you can have many choices. But in Hong Kong, you are difficult to avoid that. And even though the security law in Hong Kong, you cannot speak too much, especially in, the, in your social platform, it will be evidence for them to arrest you. So when people talk less, then the economy circle, which is very difficult to continue. So have you noticed a lot more people in a similar position to you that had restaurants and food businesses in Hong Kong are establishing themselves here? Because it does seem that a lot of people that come over from Hong Kong are quite keen to get involved in food or start food businesses. Because the food business not only for Hong Kong people, but for, for everyone, is the most easier doorstep for starting the business. Everyone knows how to cook. So there are examples of how you've adjusted your hot pot, your recipes to the UK. you find that you have to adjust your recipe, or you have to adjust your uh, cuisine, your style, to merge into the local community. I joined the 
one of the China's leading festival market in Guildford, and I cannot bring my hot pot to there. So I have to buy my chicken, my sweet and spicy sauce, and I make, uh, I use the pita bread, and I sell to the local city, to local people. They love it. It's quite amazing that the business on that day is like 70% is purchased from the local people. Because the sauce is, I use a lot of uh, like Chinese herbs, but they still love it. I am so happy. Great stuff, sir. Thank you so much. We'd heard from many people how New Malden and wider southwest London have become known as a hotspot for a growing Hong Kong community. Word of mouth reviews of restaurants like Little Nyonya spreading like wildfire. But New Malden has another claim to fame when it comes to Hong Kong. Widely regarded as Hong Kong's most famous organic farmer, Yu Wing Wong sold his farm in Hong Kong relocated with his family in 2019. Right, let's set the scene a little bit. We've just come into your allotment, you wing. It's kind yeah. of tucked away between some quite fancy houses in the new mountain and very British weather. Bă, ce vrei să-mi spui? Că am văzut că mi-ai sunat. Mă auzi? Alo. Alo, mă auzi? E unul jumătate la tine. Ce vrei să-mi spui? Te aud, dar tu nu vorbești deloc. Ai de trei mici. Alo.
Okay. Yeah, so on the, you, you know, the way you know. This one, one is garlic uh, chives. Garlic chives, I, I just mentioned uh, Hong Kong people, they love choy sum. Yeah. And the second type of uh, crops it is garlic chives. Very easy for them to go, very easy to survive. And you can harvest it every month. So it is very productive. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. What, what the people generally do? In the garlic chives. Normally, uh, oh, you wow. can chop it Smell into small that. pieces, do it as a mm. salad. Yeah, you can stir fry with eggs, or sometimes you can do some hot pot. Wow. And you can see the style of the land, it is Asian type uh, wow. style. <laughs> wow, that's pretty powerful. The you are farming and planting in a way that feels like it's part of your heritage. Yes, yeah. it, it is what I'm um, doing in Hong Kong. My parents are also doing farming in this way. Because it's really distinctively noticeable looking at other people's yeah. um, plots that you've got these kind of raised mounds of earth, these raised beds with quite neat rows between them. Why, why, is, it, why is it you do that? Uh, it is a uh, Hong Kong style uh, farming uh, practice. Normally in Hong Kong or in Asia, you bring very really happy water will damage uh, the crops, so we we'll need those drinkers to bring the water out to protect the crops. Also, we have to take care of the crops every day, so mm. we need some path to take care of mm. So, normally, the size of the, the waste bag will look like this. Yeah. So, when my customer, they visit my farm in the UK, they just got the memory, oh, it is yeah. same in the Hong Kong. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like a patch of home. Have people been quite welcoming and willing to share information and maybe curious about the growing Hong Kong community? Yeah, I'm happy that uh, people are quite interested on in me and they would like to know more what kind of vegetables I'm growing and why I come here. They didn't know why Hong Kong people will move to the UK, so we will share uh, the situation of Hong Kong with them. What we've got here is these huge sprouts. I have grown four thousand. <laughs> 2,000 onion. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> 2,000, wow, that's a lot of You Ewing has been working with another Hong Kong to teach local Hong Kong migrants how to grow the veg they use from home. Pearl now runs her own community garden project in the center of town, where you Ewing took us to meet. Again, I found the same links between Hong Kong food culture and politics. Yeah, Why are you in? Thank you. Yeah, I remember what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the team you had. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. So gradually, we, we kind of form a group of Hong Kongers uh, residing yeah. here. The work that you've been doing with Yu Wing, can you talk a little bit about that? The idea is like how to use a little bit of resources in, in things to kind of produce food for people, or it's more like to, to teach people how to grow food for their own. We've heard from Hong Kongers who travel even for to buy produce from Asian supermarkets because they know it's come from Hong Kong and they support that economy. To what degree is this kind of growing project an act of resistance in some ways? Is that something that feeds into what you're doing and what New Wing is doing? Hong Kong, in, in social movement, we thought of so many different creative ways to, to resist, <laughs> to the regime, and there is the unjust system. 
shows that it is possible. In my own experience, a British Nigerian whose parents came here from Nigeria, um, these communities have always existed, as far as I can tell, the immigrant diasporas, but they tend to concentrate around churches or family units and kind of you have to sort of get these helping hands from elsewhere. Yeah, it's really inspiring for like other immigrant groups to see and hope that maybe there's a way that this model can be applied to other groups in need or other people that want to set up a new life and uh, bring something to their culture to a new environment. I definitely think it should be used as a model. So we have a range of other programmes in the UK around supporting refugees. And um, so, for example, for people from Afghanistan and from Ukraine, but there are no real coordination between those schemes. And uh, the, I think the Hong Kong scheme has, has worked very well. But really, I think there needs to be an effort in the future to provide an all-round support to groups who are coming to the UK. Because everyone benefits. When migrants come here, they can settle and integrate, use their skills, 
add to their communities only on benefits. One thing that we, we've come across is just lack of awareness as well from employers and also schools. We did a project in, in schools where we spoke to teachers about what schools are doing to help settle in and integrate children from Hong Kong. And they didn't know why, why those children were in the UK. And people are interested, but I think they tend not to know very much about Hong Kong as their background, what they're doing in the UK, and, and that they intend to stay and they'll be part of the UK in the future. That was Heather Rolfe from the think tank British Future. The social impact of food is by no means a new concept. In fact, outside the Hong Kong situation, there are many grassroots food projects linking social integration, and culture, and even farming practices. My name is Hugh Blogg. I'm a horticultural advisor at the Soil Association, and I've got a, a kind of other works team and a passion of, of looking at how, how do we diversify the UK horticultural sector. I think food has such an important role to play in developing our psyche really, and sense of well-being from a very young age. The meals that you have as a, as a youngster, and it's not just the consuming, but it's also who you're with, who's cooking it for you, who you share it with, why the family, why the community, what meaning it's in. Yeah, it's a really important part of who you are, your, your identity, is the, the, the food that was, that was made for you and you go on to cook yourself. So it's this, this feeling of it helps to make you feel, I think, at home. You know, it helps you to, to, to in an, even if you're in a new place, uh, if you're able to have...